Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Good day to all of us. Ako po si Deborah Garcia and welcome to this series of lessons where you will learn not just the theories and form of the language but also the function and the usage. Today we are going to learn about container words and quantities or in Tagalog we say mga lalagyan at dami. I know it's been a while since the last time I uploaded a lesson because I got busy during the holiday season. But now I'm back, so if you're ready, grab your pen and paper and let us learn all about conversational Filipino. Alright, here are some of the most commonly used container words, especially in our households in the Philippines. So I prepared eight here. But before we study the container words, we need to review how do we say the numbers in Filipino? Just maybe 1 to 10. These are the most important numbers, the 1 to 10. Because when you talk about containers, then you need, most of the time, it's not just one container, right? There would be 10 containers, 6 containers, or other numbers. So, how do we say 1 to 10 in Filipino again? So, we say isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, anim, Ito, walo, sham, or siyam, sampu. Okay, let's just review the 1 to 10. And then, let's go to the containers. So, jar in, in Filipino is garapon. A jar of peanut butter, since we don't have the exact translation of the article a, then we are going to use isa. So, one. A jar of peanut butter is isang garapon ng peanut butter. Bottle. Bottle is bote. So, for example, cooking oil. What about when we have two bottles of cooking oil? Then we would say, dalawang bote ng mantika. Mantika is cooking oil. All right, number three, gallon. Gallon is galon. So this is easy. It's just almost the same. Gallon, gallon. Gallon, for example, of milk. So when we have three gallons of milk, then we would say tatlong gallon ng gatas. Gatas is milk. Okay, can, lata. Um, sardines. So we'd say, um, for example, four, apat. Nalata ng sardinas. Apat nalata ng sardinas. How about this one? Sachet. Sachet is pakete in Tagalog. So, for example, when we want five sachets of shampoo, then we would say limang pakete ng shampoo. Alright, how about here? Pile or cluster? In the Philippines, if you go to the wet market, there are sidewalk vendors who are selling cheap tomatoes and they sell it by pile or cluster. And we call it tumpok. So, for example, we say um, six clusters of tomatoes or six piles of tomatoes. Then we would say anim na tumpok ng kamatis. Tomatoes are kamatis in, in Tagalog. And then this one, scoop. We also use this word, the English term scoop, but we, we only use this when we use it with ice cream. So, how many scoops do you want? Ilang scoop ang gusto mo, but we only mean ice cream. But if it's not ice cream, for example, rice, so we say takal, and this is not an exact measurement. It's like, it's not like cups in English, like two cups of water, it's specific. But this one, it depends on how big is the measuring cup that you're using. So we don't have a specific measurement for this takal. It's not the exact translation of the measuring cup or one cup, two cups. Okay, this one, hand or piling. It's very specific. This is only used for, of course, banana. I was, I was surprised. I don't know the English terminology of this one. It's not piling, okay? It's, it's piling. So hand of a banana. I thought bananas are sold by cluster. I thought we call it cluster, but actually, no. It's it's by hand or piling. In, so, for example, if you want to buy 
eight hands of bananas, then you would say walong piling nang saging. So if you notice, when we said um, isang garapon ng peanut butter or a jar of peanut butter, we we put ng on the word or, or on the number isa. So isang garapon ng peanut butter. But when we say apat or four, apat na lata ng sardinas, we did not put ng after the number apat. You notice what's the difference? So we only use we only use the connector ng after the number when the number ends in a vowel. So like the number one, which is isa, so it ends in a, we put ng. So isang garapon ng peanut butter. While the four cans of sardines, apat is four and it ends with a consonant T, then you cannot put NG there because you cannot read it anymore. As I said, Filipino language is bisyllable, it's read bisyllable, and a syllable should compose of consonants and a vowel, at least one vowel. So when when your number ends in consonant, you cannot put ng but you are going to put the connector na so apat na lata ng sardinas all right in the previous lesson we started discussing or analyzing our sentences because we learned that in filipino sentences uh, the focus can be the subject or the object the subject is the doer of the action and the object is the receiver of the action but it's not always that the doer of the action is the focus of the sentence because it could be the receiver of the action, which is the object. And then when the object becomes the focus of the sentence, then it could become the subject. So I know it's complicated, but in the next few lessons, we are going to focus our discussion or our analysis on how we constructed our sentences. So. Same as today, I prepared four sentences here and then we will decide what is the focus for each sentence. And of course, there are always clues that I already gave you um, in the previous lessons, but we're going to repeat it today so that you won't forget. Okay, look at this sentence, number one. Binibenta ni Maria ang sampung piling ng sagi. Sampu is ten. Piling, again, piling is hand, right? So, ten hands of bananas. And then, we have a name, Maria. So, it would be the doer of the action, binibenta. From the word benta, it's, it means to sell. So, in the pre present tense, binibenta is selling. Maria is selling the 10 hands of bananas. Usually in Tagalog or in Filipino, when we use the article ang or the in English, when we place it before the subject or the doer of the action, then it means the doer of the action or the subject is the focus of the sentence. In this case, we placed it before we introduced the object or we used the article the to introduce the object, 10 hands of bananas. So when you see a sentence like this in Tagalog, where the ang is placed before the object of the sentence, then it means the doer of the action, Maria, the doer of the action, selling, is not the focus of the sentence, but the 10 hands of bananas. If I am going to convert this sentence into an actor focus sentence, I am going to reconjugate the verb benta. So I will not use in. I will not use that. I am going to use nag. So present tense, nag bebenta. That's an easier, I mean, that's an easier verb conjugation because in the previous series, we focused our uh, verb conjugation lessons on the mag nag right so in is an object focus conjugation of the verb but if i would say nag bebenta present 
So I would say, nagbebenta si Maria. I am going to change the ni to si. I am going to introduce Maria. This is one of the clue that when you would know that Maria is the focus of the sentence because the subject is being introduced or the doer of the action is being introduced by the personal topic maker, C. Si. Um, I know I discussed a lot about C si in the previous series. So you say, nagbibenta si Maria ng. Then you are not going to use ang anymore because you are not introducing the the object because the object will not be the focus. So you would say, nagbibenta si Maria ng sampung piling ng saging. Then if you're going to construct your sentence like this with this kind of verb conjugation nag, then the focus will become the doer of the action, Maria. Don't worry, we are going to make a lot of these kinds of examples so that you would, you would be familiar on how to conjugate verbs to become, uh, to, to make it, to make it uh, object focus or actor focus, okay? Number two, here. Nagsasain si Chris ng tatlong takal na bigas. So, this is easy. What did I say here? Another clue is, so that you would know the, that the doer of the action is the focus, is if the, the name is being introduced by a personal topic maker, C. Look at this one, si Chris. And the verb is in the nag form, in, in the present tense. So, nagsasain si Chris ng, so we just use ng, not ang, tatlong takal ng bigas. So obviously, this sentence is um, subject focus. So subject focus, because we use the nag, we use the si to introduce the doer, and we did not use ang to introduce the object. What if I am going to convert this into an object focus so that Chris will not be the focus, it will be the three scoops of rice. Then I would say, I am going to reconjugate the, the nag verb here. Saing, saing, I, I think I already um, explained this to you that when we refer to cooking rice, we don't use cook or the verb luto to cook. But we use saing specifically for cooking rice. Saing. So it's actually cooking. But when you use saing, it means that you are cooking not anything else but rice. Okay? So next is saing secrets. So if I am going to conjugate this one into an object focus sentence, then I would say sinasaing. Sinasaing ni Chris. So I am going to use ni. Sinasaing. Um... That's an in verb again. Sin nasaing ni Chris ang. And then I am going to change nang to ang. So, uh, sin nasaing ni Chris ang tatlong takal ng bigas. Then it will become object focus. Okay? You get it? Because these two are the same. I just interchange them. Right? Okay, this one. Umiinom ang bata ng isang galon ng gata. So, gallon of one gallon or a gallon of milk, right? So, our subject or the doer of the action is bata. Bata is kid. Kid or child. This one is an um verb. Umiinom. But, where did we put the ang? Is it here? Before the object one gallon of milk or before the subject bata we put it here right so it means the kid or the child is the focus of the sentence we did not put ang here before the one gallon of milk so in this sentence you would say we could say that the focus of this sentence is the subject still umiinom usually um verb is actor focused verb. So, umiinom ang bata ng isang galon ng gatas. If I am going to convert this sentence into an object focused sentence, then I am going to reconjugate the verb umiinom. I would use in again. I would say iniinom. Iniinom ng bata. So, I am going to I am going to to erase ang here because I am not going to introduce the bata here. 
So, because I don't want the, the kid to become the focus. So, I would say, iniinom ng bata ang. Then, I would put ang here. Ang isang galon ng gatas. Right? I, I know you would be able to digest everything if we have more examples. Don't worry. Alright, here. Last one. Ginugupit ko ang limang pakete ng shampoo. So, lima is five. Five sachets of shampoo. Who is the subject here? I discussed this one, right? It's ko. Ko. And when we discussed this in the previous lesson, I said that when you use ko, usually, what is that? Is it I as the focus of the sentence or it should be the object that's the focus of the sentence. So, when you say ko, is ako. It's the same as ako. But, in the previous lesson, I said ako is usually when the speaker and the doer of the action is the focus of the sentence. But when you use ko, it means that the object is the focus. Look at this. We put the ang before the five sachets of shampoo. I did not put it here, right? So, and our verb is an in verb. Ginu gupit ko. Gupit is cut, cutting. So, gupit is to cut. So, ginu gupit is cutting. I am cutting the five sachets of shampoo. So, this sentence is obviously an object focused sentence. So, the, the object, the five sachets of shampoo is the focus. What if I am going to convert this into a subject focus or the doer, actor focus um, sentence? So, ako, ko will become ako. Then, I would say, nagugupit ako. So, I am going to replace the infix that I use, I am going to use the nag again because nag is an actor focused conjugation of the verb. So, ginugupit ko will become naggugupit ako. Ko will become ako. So, naggugupit ako ng ng limang pakete ng shampoo. In that sentence construction, then I or the actor will become the focus of the sentence. And that is all for today. I hope you learned something. I know it's a lot for a new year, but I think this is the best time to learn something new. Start of the year, right? And also, please do not forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you want to do some exercises or practice for the previous series, I already uploaded them in Gobi Languages. If you're using your iPhone, just search the Gobi Languages app. If you're not using iPhone, you can always... Um, Look in their website, it's www.gobilanguages.com and then you will be able to do the exercises as well. So I hope to see you again in the next lesson. Bye!